A remarkable and important technology transfer is taking place in Africa. It can be seen in this Darfur refugee camp in eastern Chad, where Sudanese women are cooking food for several hundred people, using only the light of the sun. In a part of the world where most people have always cooked over smoky wood fires, these Darfur refugees are cooking with Africa's most abundant, free, and never-ending resource, the sun. Adopting any new technology is a slow, painstaking process, even when the use of that technology can make people safer, healthier, and more prosperous. But little by little, due to the efforts of a small group of dedicated people, it's happening. In the past five years, thanks to the work of visionaries like Dirk Reichs, Mary Rose Nulom of Chad Soler, and Rachel Andress and her colleagues at Jewish World Watch, women in three Darfur refugee camps in eastern Chad have manufactured and distributed more than 40,000 cardboard and aluminum foil solar cookers. These simple devices that reach temperatures of 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 120 degrees centigrade allow families to cook up to two meals each day using only the light of the sun. Women in these camps who have always used a three stone fire for their cooking needs have now learned to integrate several simple cooking devices for maximum fuel economy. With three simple technologies, they are able to reduce their fuel consumption by more than 80%. When the sun is shining, they use their solar cookers. When it's cloudy or they need to cook early in the morning, they use fuel-efficient stoves like the Save 80, the locally made Save 75, or handmade mud stoves. To increase the efficiency of both cooking methods, they're weaving baskets and stuffing them with blankets to create retained heat cookers that will keep cooked food hot until after dark or continue cooking foods like beans for many more hours without additional fuel. Across the border in Sudan, Steve Harrigan's Solar Clutch team is working with the Darfur Peace and Development Organization to help refugees with the design, testing, use, and construction of new versions of solar cookers, like the Borma Clay Water Pot Solar Cooker, the Poly Furnace, a waterproof plastic flutboard version of the cardboard cooket, and the Sun Scoop Box Cooker, which can hold four pots at a time. Fifteen years ago, in Kenya, Solar Cookers International organized large-scale introductions of solar cookers in the Kakama and Dadaab refugee camps, which housed tens of thousands of people fleeing conflicts in Sudan, Somalia, Ethiopia, Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, and Eritrea. Thousands of families were taught how to cook and pasteurize water with the sun, using the least expensive solar cooker ever made, the cardboard and aluminum foil Cook It. Solar cooking continues to spread, although very slowly, to many parts of this sun-drenched continent where trees are being cut down at an unsustainable rate to make the charcoal that fuels millions of cooking fires. Women in other parts of Sudan, as well as in Somalia, South Africa, Zambia, and other African countries are cooking and boiling water with parabolic cookers. Men are using these devices in tea shops to keep their pots boiling with sunshine instead of burning up piles of scarce wood every day. Many types of solar cookers are used in the South American Andes, in the flooded lowlands of Bangladesh, in the Altiplano of Bolivia, the steppes of western China, in India, Mexico, Afghanistan, and many other countries. And yet for reasons that are difficult to understand, there is still little interest among donors in providing research money to make this product that mainly benefits the poor and uses only the light of the sun more durable, more efficient, and less expensive. Some development experts argue that traditional families will not like the taste of solar cooked food because it lacks that smoky flavor. They seem oblivious to the fact that the primary goal of fuel efficient stoves and solar cookers is to eliminate that smoky flavor because it's the smoke from cooking fires that's killing 1.5 million women and children every year. I wish they could talk to these ladies in Zimbabwe or these Sudanese and Chadian men who are enjoying a solar cooked meal or this young man who is learning solar cooking at the Culinary Institute of Africa in Juba, Sudan. They seem to love their solar cooked food.
Although some experts argue that traditional foods cannot be made in a solar cooker, even the simplest, cheapest solar cooker, the cardboard and aluminum foil cook it, can cook meat, vegetables, rice, tea, sauces, and even cornmeal using only the light of the sun. This lady is about to open a steaming pot of solar cooked boule or cornmeal, which normally must be stirred vigorously when it is boiled over an open fire to prevent it from burning. After an hour of cooking, she removes the hot pot of boule from the solar cooker and whips it vigorously for less than a minute to convert it from the consistency of polenta into that of fluffy mashed potatoes. Since boule made in a solar cooker heats slowly and evenly, there is no danger of burning the food and it won't stick to the pot, making cleaning a snap, an important factor when access to water is limited. Women could leave their food to solar cook in the sun while they sit in the shade and do other things, like making pots or braiding hair. One woman told me she likes the solar cooker because it gives her more time to work on building the walls around her house. Even men like solar cookers since it allows them to make their own tea while their wives are out building the walls. Must people in the developing world wait until their forests are completely gone before the international community is prepared to devote any resources to improving solar cooker technology? Research is needed to find a cheap, durable alternative to the plastic bag, which wears out after a few weeks of exposure to hot liquids and desert sand, since it must be shaken dry by these women who do not have extra water for cleaning their bags after each use. Clear plastic domes seem to work as replacements for the plastic bag to keep the heat in during the cooking process, but they need to be tested by materials engineers for UV resistance and off-gassing when heated. Cardboard and foil solar cookers which can deteriorate rapidly in a harsh desert environment, could be made more durable and affordable with stronger materials, like those being tested by Solar Clutch in Sudan. Enterprising craftsmen in refugee camps are turning old salad oil cans and discarded packing crates into doors, windows, bowls, and knives. These men could easily make and sell solar cookers with scrap materials if provided with a workable design. Taking three to four hours to gather a one-day supply of wood is no longer sustainable in Africa or anywhere else. Solar cookers must be part of the solution. I'm very glad to use solar cooker. I'm now spending a lot of time doing my work at home. I'm not going to fish out. I'm going to cook with solar cooker, nice food. We like to have some more cooker solar to give to to give other people and use it. Oh,